really close. <laughs> wow, my bed is really messy right now. All of this is very messy right now. Doesn't matter. Uh, okay, where do I start with this video? So I actually filmed this deer breastfeeding video before I had my son. Uh, I had my son August 18th, and so he's like, what, six weeks old now? Um, and so I filmed this whole video before, and I was really happy with how it turned out, and I was really excited to put it out. And now I'm gonna like basically re-say all of those things with the knowledge that I have now, um, having breastfed two babies, um, continuing and still breastfeeding my son right now because there are some things that have changed um, my opinion anyway. And so I just think I have a better overall understanding and experience in general with it now to like speak to it. But I was really happy with the way that other video came out. Um, so I'm kind of bummed about that that I didn't get it out before my son came, he was 10 days early. So I had a conference, I have a conference call in about an hour. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have makeup on anyway. I might as well film a video so I can look put together. But we all know if you've been watching my Instagram stories that I have not been wearing much makeup at all. My son is a freaking barnacle and I cannot hardly get any time alone. So um, all things will change, but that's how it is right now. Uh, so I think I'm actually gonna film like a video after this one, like an update, healing, um, all that kind of stuff. So anyways, let's just jump right into it. So um, I had a very, very hard breastfeeding experience with my firstborn. She is 16 months right now. I tried to breastfeed, I think it lasted about two and a half months. Um, my milk did not come in. There's so many things that I just like didn't know. And I'm also gonna say this, this is based on my experience and my knowledge. So of course, as always, contact your doctor, um, you know, do your own research, but hopefully my experience and what I have to say could help you or inspire you at least in some small way. But again, this is like my experience and everyone's experience is totally different. So take everything with a grain of salt. But um, my milk did not come in for five days until after my daughter was born. So that night, the night before my milk came in, we decided to give her formula. She was almost 10 pounds and I just felt like she was a big baby and she was hungry. Um, nothing we could do would settle her. She had like serious colic for like three months. It was a really, really difficult transition being thrown into not having a baby to not only having a baby that needs you every second, but that is very upset and unhappy and uncomfortable for like three months. It was really gnarly. So. Um, throw all the hormones that you have going on in your body after you have a baby and then trying to breastfeed and there is just really not enough information on the internet like or not enough like real shit on the internet about breastfeeding and maybe you're watching this because you're having a really hard time breastfeeding or maybe you're just here because you like me and you don't even have a baby <laughs> like whatever it may be hopefully you enjoy the video and get something out of it but um, you know, there's just not a whole lot out there like about how difficult breastfeeding can be and like what a freaking commitment it is. So I wanted to like, my whole idea with breastfeeding was like, oh, it'll be like easy. Like I don't really need to do a lot of research. I, it'll come naturally. Like me and my baby will figure this out together and like it'll be this thing. Um, that's not how it went at all. Um, my nipples were like bleeding and my daughter had a tongue tie actually she had like lip ties tongue ties cheek ties like we got all of that taken care of at three days old um and uh so we got that handled and i gave her formula and the day that i gave her formula a friend of mine came over who has three kids and she's like where's your breast pump because i was like my milk hasn't come in and like i don't know what is going on um she's like where the hell is your breast pump and she's like go get it so i went and got my breast pump and she's like helping me put it in my bra and like turn it on and do it she's like you need to do this like this is going to tell your body like you know because i did not want my child on my boobs they were so sore they were painful and so i was kind of just doing the bare minimum which is the opposite of what you need to do um, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, I didn't have those silver cups for your nipples. I'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, but the next morning after using my pump, 
my milk came in. I, in the morning, my boobs just felt like very sore and he, like they were gonna explode. And I was like, holy shit, my milk just came in. Well, unfortunately I had already given my daughter a bottle and she saw how easy it was to get milk out. Um, and I will tell you too, throughout the time of like that five days of before I got my milk coming in or before my milk came in, it's just colostrum that comes out of your boobs, which is supposedly enough to fill up your baby's stomach. Um, their stomach is very, very tiny. But anytime she was breastfeeding, she would just squirm and kick and scream and was not happy. And it was like the least peaceful bonding experience you could ever imagine. It was frustrating. It made me feel like I wasn't doing it right. It made me feel like there was something wrong with me and there was something wrong with my milk or my colostrum or whatever. Like, why hasn't my milk come in? And I just felt defeated. And I just felt so frustrated. And I would just cry with her while she was trying to breastfeed. And I'm like, this is awful. So I finally um, stuck with it as much as I could. I got a notepad. I was writing down when I was breastfeeding and when and which side, and I would put the wristband on the other side so I knew that I needed to start on whatever. I was doing all of the things. I, I bought all of the supplements. I was drinking electrolyte drinks. I was, I was taking brewer's yeast supplements. I was taking Moringa or some of those things can actually decrease your milk supply too. So check into that before you just start throwing things in your diet and in your body. Um, but, um, yeah, so I just was like trying everything under the sun to like get more milk to come in. And I was also under the impression that whatever I was pumping was how much I was just making. So if I wasn't pumping very much and there was only like an ounce in my pump, I was like, Oh, I guess I'm not making a lot of milk. And that's actually not the case. Like you're baby can get more milk out of your breasts than you can with a pump. It's just different. The other thing is your baby's saliva actually communicates with your body and your body makes what your baby needs. It's really quite incredible how it works. Um, so anyways, like I was just like, I tried for two and a half months to just get on a schedule, but she always felt like she was just having the worst day of her life. Whenever I would try and breastfeed, I just felt inadequate. I felt, I just felt so many negative emotions surrounding breastfeeding. And it was really, really hard for me because your body is going through so much after you have a baby, like emotionally, physically, hormonally. And like to top it off, like everyone's just like, oh my God, breastfeeding is this amazing thing. And like, to me, I was just like, this is not the experience that I'm having. And unfortunately this isn't worth it. Like I cannot sacrifice my mental health and my mental, like I need to be there for my baby in other ways than just food. So if she's happy, healthy, and like fed, like I have to give this up. So I ended up ordering formula um, from a website that I'll actually link for you guys below. There's two that I've ordered from. One's from the, all the formula that I, I personally got and researched that I liked the best was from Germany. One site actually ships it from California though, so you get it in a day, which is super awesome. Um, and their shipping is free if you order a certain amount. So I'll leave that link for you below if you are in need of formula or you want a supplement or whatever. So I was kind of doing a little bit of formula and a little bit of breast milk and my baby had such bad colic. This is Harlow we're talking about. If you're not new here and you know my my babies. Um, so she, like anytime I would just breastfeed, it was just like she was kicking and screaming. And I was like, I don't even know how people use that haka thing on one side that collects the milk on the opposite breast that isn't being fed on because she would just kick and scream. And it was just like so it gave me anxiety, like trying to feed her and it just made me sad and I felt like a failure. And so I just wanted to like say that like if you're having a hard time with breastfeeding like there's a few different factors that play into that that i'm going to talk about but it is okay to not want to do that or to feel like it's not good for you mentally or physically to do that and some women don't breastfeed at all you know and so they can it's everyone's choice to do what they want to do but i just want to say like you're not alone if you have had or you are currently experiencing a very very hard time breastfeeding I was there and I know how you feel and it is awful. Give yourself some grace. It's not your fault. There's nothing wrong with you. And sometimes your body, like I, oh my gosh, my birth story for my first child, if you haven't seen that video, I will link it for you, was insane. My second baby basically almost fell out in the car. Like I, <laughs> It's so different. Like my body knows what it's doing now. And I truly think that that can play a role in some people's stories. Like your body doesn't know what it's doing. And so 
A lot of that also has to do with your baby, which I need to talk about in a second, but I just wanted to like let you know that you're doing a great job and if you are having a hard time breastfeeding and you're not sure if it's for you and you're not sure if you want to continue, continue watching the rest of this video, see how you feel at the end and do all of your own research and everything and just go with your gut because literally as long as your baby is like fed and like clean and taking care of in those ways, like you're good. Like you can use formula. Um, you know, I found that it was a little harder on my baby's stomach. She had colic really bad and it was pretty gnarly for a few months. I'm not saying that that's going to happen to you if you feed your baby formula, but just, you know, there are sensitive formulas out there and stuff. But, um, I want to talk a little bit about like my journey now too, but people will always tell you like with breastfeeding, just stick with it, just stick with it. And some women just don't produce enough milk. That's just bottom line you can and i truly don't believe that you can eat all of these things that like make your like breast milk like full like more i guess like the um the amount that you're making like oatmeal and like all these things i don't buy any of that i don't buy that any of that does a damn thing i truly don't i think all those supplements are bullshit maybe they help like this much but um nothing that i did worked and even if i did work with her to breastfeed i think it really came down to supply and demand and she wasn't latching properly and so my body didn't know like what to do like okay we don't really need to make as much milk i don't know exactly what happened but i can tell you that this time is so different so when I made my last video, when I said I made this video before I filmed it, I, um, or like before I had filmed it, before comma I had filmed it, not before I had filmed it. <laughs> um, I made this video and I was like, hey, you know what I'm gonna do this time? I have my colostrum collectors, which I'll pop on the screen right here. These are really cool. I did not know these existed. I also did not know with my last pregnancy that you could collect colostrum um, from 36, 37 weeks forward um, and start having a storage of that so that if you feel like your baby's not getting enough in those initial, you know, first days or whatever, you can utilize those and feed those to your baby too. Um, so this pregnancy I did collect colostrum and I was getting it pretty early. Um, I didn't see that come in with my first uh, pregnancy that quick. So I don't know if my body was like, all right, let's do this. Like we know what we're doing. Like, like, we're, we're, we're making colostrum and, and then milk. So, um, I was like, I'm going to collect, clo I, I collected colostrum with my second pregnancy. And I also was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start pumping a week before my due date so that my milk starts to come in. And I don't have this like five days where I feel like I don't have enough for my baby just to, just to whatever. And I wouldn't do that now. Like, First of all, I had my baby 10 days early, so I didn't even get the opportunity to do that. And I'm glad I didn't because it's just better if your baby is the one telling your body, um, because like I said, their saliva communicates with your body and um, tells, you know, your body how to make the milk and how, what they need in the milk. Um, so I wouldn't do that now, but I was planning on doing that. So it's not a horrible idea, though, to pump, I would say, like in between when your baby is sleeping, like the day they are born, just to kind of get it going. Um, consult somebody about that, but that's what I would do. That's what I would do, but I think everything worked out fine this time, but if you're worried about it, have a breast pump on hand. That's something that you need to have, in my opinion, no matter what. Like, even if you're only planning on exclusively breastfeeding, I do think that you need to have a breast pump um, around just for an emergency or, you know, if you need to get things going. So with Wyatt, my son, um, breastfeeding has been drastically different. It's crazy. I, my milk came in, I want to say the second or third day after he was born. And from the get go, I've heard that it's a boy thing, so I don't know, but from the get go, he latched pretty damn well. And he always wanted to nurse and always wants to nurse still. So what I am doing this time that I didn't do last time is I'm allowing him to nurse whenever he wants on demand. And I just stuck through my nipples hurting. And you'll hear people say, even at the hospital, so don't listen to them. If they tell you, if it hurts, you're doing it wrong. That's not true. Um, that is not fucking true, okay? Um, <laughs> that's not true. So I will tell you, what how i take that now so in when you first start breastfeeding you haven't had a baby sucking on your nipples all day long and night ever right 
unless you're like a second time mom and you have been through that before, but it's probably been a while. So yes, your nipples are going to be sore. They're going to hurt. They're probably going to crack. Um, and that's just how it is. Like you have to get your nipples used to it and then they chill out and then it doesn't hurt. Um, it'll hurt now that my nipples don't hurt anymore. My nipples hurt for about one to two weeks. I use the silver cups. They did not take the pain away, but they did take the physical um, appearance of like the cracked and the bleeding, like the silver cups totally fixed that. I got mine on Amazon for like $45 or something. Highly recommend. I did not have those with my first pregnancy um, or my first like breastfeeding journey. I would definitely get them. I was like, oh, they're too expensive. Like I don't want to buy it. Get them. Uh, put it on your baby registry. I think they're amazing to have. They're a great tool. Um, like I said, it didn't take any of the pain away, but it did make my nipples look so much better. Like they didn't look crazy. Um, so, uh, sorry, my child just walked in the door from her walk um, with a nanny and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, so I, uh, my milk came in like day three and Oh, I was saying, so yeah, if they tell you that if it hurts, you're doing it wrong, that's really not the case. Like, just like if you were to like, like walk outside barefoot on rocks the, for the first time, for the first week, it's probably gonna hurt your feet until you build up calluses. And then after that, you're going to feel so much better and you'll be able to walk out there and it's not gonna hurt your feet anymore. Like if you step on a rock the incorrect way, yeah, it's gonna hurt a little bit more, but it's not like just hurting every time you're doing it. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? So um, pretty much like what I'm saying is when, <laughs> she's banging on the door. Hi, Harlo. Um, did you want to come in? Hang on. Did you want to come in and say hi? You want to come say hi to the camera? Hi. You want to say hi? Hi. Yeah. Say hi. 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 I was not so good at breastfeeding, huh? Huh. Hi. Okay. Oh, did you have a good walk? Yes. Yes. Mommy. That's mommy in a picture frame. It's so sh just so good. Mommy. Mommy. The other day, Faith Hill was on um, <sighs> the TV screen and she goes, Mommy. I was like, I'll take it. Mommy. I love you. Phone. Yeah, my phone's right there. Good job. Right there. Right there. Did you go outside? Outside. Outside. <laughs> hey. I love you. Hey. Hmm. So, um, basically now that my nipples are like used to breastfeeding, um, like if he has a really shallow latch, cause I side nurse at night, I don't sit up. Um, it is less comfortable and doesn't feel great, but I wouldn't say it like hurts. Um, so like, I think that is what people are talking about when they say, oh, if it hurts, like it, you know, the latch isn't right or whatever. I feel like once it's established and your nipples are used to it, like then that statement makes sense. Um, but prior to that, like that shit's going to hurt. Okay. That's red wine. Let's not do that. Okay. So, um, so yeah, when he has a shallow latch or he doesn't really, right now he's kind of going through this thing, I think, cause he's super colicky too, is like when I'm nursing, he's kind of like just, his head is going everywhere. He's pulling my nipple with him. That doesn't feel good. Um, and he's just kind of like fidgety, you know, rather than just chilling and like nursing. So that can be a little obnoxious too. And that can kind of cause your nipples to like be in discomfort, but I wouldn't say it like hurts. Um, so I have just been feeding on demand with him. And pretty much what that means is like, I'm not really using an app anymore. I'm not like timing it. I'm not like only feeding like every two hours. Like whenever he's fussy, I just stick him on there. Um, it's good for multiple reasons. Um, in the first like month, month and a half, your milk is like gonna regulate and like your body's figuring out how much milk your baby needs. Do you, you know, do you have one baby? Do you have two baby? Like how, how many, how much milk does your baby need? So during this time, it's important to pretty much put your baby on your boob, like both, like all day, every day, like whenever you can, like sit on the couch, watch TV, like breastfeed as much as you can, let them even sit there and like nurse and like just be soothed by your nipple being in their mouth. Like your nipple is like a pacifier. So, um, 
that's what I've done with Wyatt. I've pretty much, it's hard because I'm always up wanting to like clean things and do things. And like, so I find it very hard to just like sit on the couch. Like that's just not my personality. So that's been challenging, but I pretty much just let him nurse. And it's been so amazing to be able to like just stick my boob in my baby's mouth and calm them down and soothe them when they're having a meltdown or when he's not feeling well or like whatever. Like it's just been so nice. Like I, I have one thing in my toolbox that I know is always going to work and I didn't have that with Harlow and it was very difficult. Um, she didn't like pacifiers. She didn't want to breastfeed. So um, anyways, uh, I pretty much also, I would say I used milk catcher. Well, I'm gonna say to you that you should use milk catchers in the, at least the first like month and a half of your baby being being on earth because you a lot of milk comes out like now mine has kind of slowed down like I don't leak as much throughout the day I still have to wear like pads but I used to get like five ounces a day just for my little milk catchers that would sit in my bra so I'll link those for you guys too I found some that look, work way better than the Hakka ladybug ones they're way more like low profile and you can like wear them out and about with it being like tremendously obvious that you have something in your bra. You look like you're like smuggling friggin something in there. But um, these are way more low prof profile. So I highly recommend wearing those. I've been pumping kind of in between or like after he feeds and he's sleeping. Like if I feel like he hasn't emptied each of my boobs good enough, um, I'll pump and I'll, you know, so I've been storing it. I have like over a hundred ounces in my freezer stored. And we just started doing bottles here and there. I think he's had two or three total. I'm gonna do as few of those as possible right now, but I kind of just started going back to the gym. So um, I'm trying to think if I if there's anything else that I needed to touch on. Please like leave any questions you have in the comments below. I will do my best to get back to you. Or if I forgot to link something, let me know and I'll either comment it to you or update the description box. Um, but basically like my journeys with both of my children breastfeeding have been very different and I just didn't have the knowledge that I have now with my first to like do the things that I kind of needed to do to make it successful. So I feel like part of it was me and part of it was my baby because she got, I don't know what caused her to be fussy on the boob. I don't know if it's cause she got a bottle and that was way easier to get milk out of. And so she was like, screw this. Um, I want the bottle or if she was just colicky. So she was very uncomfortable and couldn't like, you know, figure out a comfortable position. I don't know if it's cause her tongue ties prevented her from having a good latch. So she couldn't get enough out. She was getting frustrated. I don't know what it was, but that feeling was awful of feeling like not being able to comfort my baby. Like, I feel like I just didn't have the tools or the right thing to make her calm and like not frustrated. So I know that feeling. And if you're going through that, I'm really sorry. Um, you'll get through it. Um, but hopefully like you can find the path that's going to work for you the best. But, um, just, I just, if I had known, like th um, if I had known with my first pregnancy what I know now, I think I would have been a lot more successful. So part of it was me and my knowledge and the lack thereof, I guess. And then part of it was my baby. You know, Wyatt's a champ. He just always wants to nurse. So he's always telling my body, like, I want more. I want more milk. So my body makes more milk. And so it's been going really well. Like, I have had no issues. And I don't really pump too much in between. I have read that if you tend to pump too much between you don't get as much milk as your baby's gonna get out. Um, but also that you're telling your body, especially in the first month and a half when your body's trying to figure out like, okay, what's my baseline? How much milk do I need to make? Um, you're telling it to make too much and you can just become engorged way too often and then you'll just have too much milk. And I know what you're thinking because when I heard that from somebody, I was like, that's a way better problem than the opposite. Um, so I'm kind of on the fence on that. I, you know, I pump a little bit here and there, but I'm not trying to like pump like all the time to like get, cra like I don't need a crazy uh, supply. You know, sometimes we'll go four or five hours at night and he doesn't wake up to eat. Um, and sometimes now I have to pump because my boobs are so engorged and sometimes I kind of don't. I think my body's kind of trying to figure it out right now, kind of getting to that point where we're gonna be good. But um, yeah, I don't really wear my milk catchers anymore because not as much milk is coming out in between feedings as it was. Um, but yeah, breastfeeding is going really well right now. He is kind of being a little squirmy right now, um, but I think it's the colic. He has been pretty fussy. The first two weeks of his life, he pretty much didn't open his eyes at all. So I think he's having a hard time being like earth side as opposed to being in the womb. So I think that's like one thing. But um, anyways, that was me trying to 
close off the video and it took me like six minutes. So if you guys have any questions though, leave them in the comments um, and I will try my best to answer. And if you're going through a very difficult breastfeeding journey right now, then I totally understand where you're coming from and I have been there and just know that you can make whatever decision is good for you. Like if you wanna do formula, do formula. If you want to try to stick with it, because you're determined and that's what you want, then do that. And I just highly recommend feeding on demand and even like, like whenever your baby's fussy, just put them on your boob and get them to, uh, you know, watch some breastfeeding videos and see exactly how you should do it. But I basically make like a sandwich with my boob and shove it in their mouth, like shove it in his mouth as far back as I can get it. You're not gonna choke them. Um, and I think another thing that comes into play that I didn't mention is um, your nipples. So I think that, like I was told at the hospital that I had really good nipples for breastfeeding. They protrude a bit, especially after already having one child. Um, they protrude a bit, they're not like inverted or flat. So if you do have an inverted nipple or a flat nipple, oh, this brings me to something I did wanna mention, so I'm glad I thought of this, um, is nipple shields. So a nipple shield is this like, I'll put it up here too, it's this little silicone piece that pops on your nipple that kind of like um, makes your nipple like, it's almost like wearing a padded bra for your nipple, if that makes sense. So it makes your nipple a little bit bigger and a little bit longer, so it's easier for your baby to latch onto that, but they can still nurse through that and get milk. So I wouldn't recommend using it forever. I did try to use these with Harlow as well. I thought maybe my nipple was the issue. Um, and it worked great. So I highly recommend those too if you think just to have them like just to have them in case it's a problem and it's you know a pain point um, you have that tool to use and maybe you just need it to use it a for a little bit until your baby gets used to like nursing and latching but I kind of feel like you probably don't want them to get too used to that but it is a good tool to help you get to where you want to go. So um, that's another really good thing to use. But if you're if you're having a hard time right now, like you're not alone, I've been there, I've been there, I've been there. Um, don't be too hard on yourself because it's it can really mess with you if you aren't able to like do what you need to do. So I totally, I, like I totally understand. But as long as your baby is fed, you are good. Like don't be too hard on yourself. Um, that's all I can really say is like, I, I just, I wish I could like reach the screen and hug you if you're having a hard time because I, I've been there and it's a sad place to be and it's a hard place to be. And honestly, just don't be so hard on yourself. You just had a baby, like you just did an amazing thing. And you know what? There are so many factors that play into being able to nurse and breastfeed successfully. Um, and sometimes things just don't align and it's just not going to be possible or maybe you don't want to, and that's okay as well. So just do what you want to do and stick with it if you can and just nurse on demand. And yeah, I don't, I feel like I'm just going to go in circles and ramble and ramble. Um, but uh, hang in there and I hope this video was somewhat insightful or useful. If it was, then please give it a thumbs up. Um, giving videos a thumbs up on my channel tells YouTube that you enjoyed my video and then they suggest it to other people. And um, yeah, it's very helpful for my channel. So I appreciate that. Um, I will look in the comments for your guys' uh, questions and answer those if I can. And I, I wish you guys the best of luck on your breastfeeding journey if you are um, on that right now or going to be soon. And good for you for you know educating yourself on everyone else's experience so that you know uh, maybe what could happen or what might happen or what you wanna get to be prepared. So good for you. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. I have to hop on this call right now. I'm like going like this and I'm literally not wearing a watch. So that's where we're at today. Bye guys, have a good one.